And Ari Fleischer, one of my predecessors as White House press secretary in the George W. Bush administration and a Fox News contributor, and really the person who I first learned <laughs> tax policy from because you were at the Ways and Means Committee right. way back in 1995. <laughs> um, what do you think about the substance of today's policy? Well, I like it. I like it a lot. It's an echo of Ronald Reagan's 1980s reforms. And the key to me is does it provide economic growth for all Americans? Because mm -hmm. that's what this is all about. If our economy keeps growing at the 1.5 percent rate it did for the eight years of Obama, we're never going to help poor people. We're never going to help people in the middle class. Economic growth is the answer, and we need a stimulus bill like this. There is some criticism that the president's proposal is not as big and bold as, say, Ronald Reagan's. Um, but how do you look at that historically? Because Ronald Reagan was working from a much different uh, set of numbers. Well, before I came here, I was talking to a real smart analyst, and, and she pointed out that <laughs> Reagan's taxes were at the 70 percent rate, yeah. and then he took, took them down the 28 percent rate. Now we're at a stage where taxes really are at 41 percent after you count up all the Obamacare taxes on Medicare. Mm -hmm. And what he's proposing Trump is to move it down to 35 percent. That's a big 6 percent change in the upper income bracket. And there are a lot of economic growth will result from that. The other interesting change is they're proposing to l double the standard deduction, which means a tremendous number of people are no longer going to pay any income tax who are lower income people. And that's going to shift, therefore, the burden to the higher brackets. And how do so the Democrats then, why are the Democrats then saying that this is only going to benefit the rich? I mean, that's something they always say. Yeah. But the standard deduction piece, that is significant. Significant. And I think the Democrats will support that. Look, there's a fundamental philosophical divide here. Republicans believe economic growth helps all Americans. Democrats believe redistribution of income decided by the government helps all Americans. I think the data is clear. Economic growth helps people. We saw it in the 80s. We actually saw it in the 90s when Bill Clinton signed a Republican tax cut plan that included a... We saw it in the early 2000s. And we saw it in the early 2000s mm -hmm. in the Bush years, which, by the way, for the eight Bush years, as you know, economic growth was over 3% a year. Mm -hmm. And that never happened under the Obama years. The deficit was almost eliminated in 2007. It was only $161 billion. Mm -hmm. And now with Obama, with a 41% top rate, the deficit's four times as high. So we need economic growth. That is the answer to our nation's ailments. So you're an excellent communicator. There's no question about that. Um, I find tax reform, it can be quite boring. Okay, when you start talking about the deduction and the this and the and using terms and things that are just difficult for people to understand, how can you make tax reform exciting again? Well, to me, as I, said, I called it economic growth. But really what we're talking about is having a golden goose. If our American economy doesn't have a golden goose, we turn into Europe. And, and that's not even a goose. That's that their economy. That's is barely so like weak. a that's like a lame duck. They have a, that's <laughs> right. They have 10 percent unemployment and economies mm -hmm. that don't grow. America has always been distinct. One of the reasons we've been distinct is we believe in individualism and letting people achieve what they can. The sky's the limit. And when you do that in America, you create jobs for everybody and everybody gains. We need a tax code that helps that golden goose grow so we can all benefit. So I remembered, I think it was a few months back, you were talking about how you sell tax reform across America. And you, I believe, encouraged President Trump to get out of Washington, not talk about it there, but to go to red states that have Democratic senators or members of Congress to try to push them. I think that President Trump uh, is doing that. Uh, will it be enough? He did it today, of course, in Indiana. And Senator Joe Donnelly went with the president to Indiana, a Democrat, who has a tough reelection. Um, look, what I'm heartened about here is this is a, a policy rollout by the president. It's kind of normal. It's what presidents do to start to make their case. And I think what President Trump will find is that bully pulpit really works when people are invested in what he's selling and he can sell especially this dogma, because it's good for the country. He needs to do more of it. He yeah. needs to keep that foot on the gas. I think he'll be actually... So he gave that big policy speech today. I sort of see that as, like, the foundation. But I'm looking forward to the speech that he gives on tax reform that doesn't have the teleprompter, that is just him selling it the way that he sold himself to American voters. Yeah, he's always had a challenge with that. He can sell himself, but when it comes to policy, he doesn't have the same fluency in policy. So... I would hope he can do it. I think it's important to do it. But he needs to be more accessible on this to make the case. And there are a lot of Democrats who have to scratch their head and say, which way should I go on this? I think it's going to pass in the House. I'm worried about the Senate. Do you think it'll pass in the House before the end of the year? Yes. I think it'll pass in the House before the end of the year. The test is going to pass in the Senate. I don't think it has to go to a conference and get finalized before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But if they are not on the path to getting this done by the end of the year, Republicans across the country are going to say, why did we elect? Well, him? then what about the politics, though? So if you are Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, you know that your constituents uh, probably want tax reform. 
You also know that uh, the country needs it, as you were saying, in terms of just economically for economic growth. But they are not in the mood to give a win right. to the Republicans because they want to run on President Trump being a failure and the Republicans being a do nothing Congress. So how do they make their calculation? The trick to that is for Donald Trump to become popular. If Donald Trump's popularity is in the mid 40s, 50s, he has a lot of clout then in those Democratic red states where the Democratic senators are. If his popularity is in the mid 30s, upper 30s, then they're going to go with Schumer. But if they fear a Trump backlash in their states, they're going to be torn. And that makes it more likely that they could vote for this tax reform plan. And what about for 2018 for the House reelection efforts for Republicans or also for the challengers, Democrats? I mean, how much could this change the calculus for those races? Well, if you pass this and the economy starts to grow at a regular 3 percent rate, voters are going to want to vote Republican. It's going to help Republicans everywhere because we got something done and we proved it was worth electing us. Mm -hmm. We get nothing done. Even though we have a very favorable Senate lineup because so many Democrats are up, not Republicans, we're going to put the wind against us instead of with us. And that's why it's so important to elect, enact policy. This is what government is about. It's not about politics. So how and much does the failure to pass health care actually hamper any, this effort? Does it make this effort easier or, as Senator Corker apparently said, makes it harder? What we won't know yet. The, the truth is you, you look at what happened on health care and you say there's reason for this to fail again. On the other hand, they, these members know, I've had conversations with several of them in the last week, they know they need to deliver. They know they failed on health care, and if they don't do this, they get the voter anger that's out there in the Republican base and throughout the Republican Party about what good are you. So they have a burden. The question is, when it comes down to voting yes, which way will they go? I think we'll have a repeat in the Senate. I'm, I'm worried Senator McCain will say, well, no Democrats are for it, so I won't be. I'm worried Senator Paul will say, well, if it's not perfect, I'm against it. And then it'll be up to Senator Collins to decide. Wow. So it comes it all comes down to Maine. It may come the same <laughs> way as healthcare. Yeah.